chapter 8, if you have your Bibles, we're going uh, to read there in just a moment. Uh, Luke chapter 8, and we're going to start in verse 40 to give you some context. In talking about freedom, you know, there's someone here in this, in this story that had a great need in their life, and they were uh, praying, and they were, they were needing freedom in their life from an issue that they were experiencing. So it's a beautiful story, and, and um, I want to jump off here in uh, Luke 8, uh, verse 40, and we're going to read uh, these scriptures here, and then we're going we're gonna to pray and ask God to have his way this morning. Luke 8, verse 40. Amen. The Bible says this. It says, On the other side of the lake, the crowds welcomed Jesus because they had been waiting for him. Then a man named uh, Jairus, a leader of the local synagogue, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come home with him, his only daughter, who was about 12 years old, was dying. As Jesus went with him, he was surrounded by the crowds. The Bible says he was surrounded by the crowds. And now in verse 43 is going to be our focus this morning. A woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding. Uh, another translation says it calls it an issue of blood. Uh, and she could find no cure. Coming up behind Jesus, she touched the fringe of his robe Immediately, the bleeding stopped. Who touched me? Jesus asked. Everyone denied it, and Peter said, Master, this whole crowd is pressing up against you. But Jesus said, Someone deliberately touched me, for I felt healing power go out from me. Another translation says virtue. I felt virtue leave me, he said. In verse 47, when the woman realized that she could not stay hidden, she began to tremble and fell to her knees in front of him. The whole crowd heard her explain why she had touched him and that she had been immediately healed. Daughter, he said to her, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Praise God. Let's pray this morning. If you would bow your head with me. Amen. Father, we're so grateful. Lord, to be in your presence, O oh God. And Lord, we just uh, thank you for what you've already begun doing in this service, and we just dedicate the rest of this service to you, my God. Have your way this morning, God. Speak to our hearts. Help us to understand, Father God, that with you all things are possible, God. Any needs that we have, Father God, you are the answer, Lord. And I just uh, lift up your children here. I lift up those also uh, uh, tuning in online that you would just help us all, Father, to understand and know the power, God, that we have available to us through faith, O oh God. Father, we're grateful, we're thankful, we ask in Jesus' name. We all say, amen, amen. This morning, I want to uh, preach a message entitled, A Woman in the Crowd. A Woman in the Crowd. Now, as we look at this passage here, we understand and we see someone who was in dire need of a miracle in their lives. You know, she was going through so much in her life. She had, the Bible says she had spent all that she had to, to get her healing, to, to get an answer for her troubles, for her problem, for her pain. But still, she was in a place of need. Still, she needed a miracle. And we see a couple instances here where the word crowds were mentioned. And starting there in verse 40, it talks about the crowds. And, and a few other instances here, it talked about the crowds, that this woman who, who needed a miracle. And there was Jesus, and imagine his fame that was going before him and the crowds that, that just followed him because everyone had needs. And they were coming to him. But she had a need. And I know we're in this place and we have issues, right? This, this, this woman had an issue of blood, but we all have issues things that we face, inner turmoil, circumstances, trials, situations, hardships, times of fear, times of doubt, times of need. We all have things in our life. We all have issues that we face, that we need God's help, and, and this, this woman here was no different for her. But I want to look at a couple things that made the difference, made it possible for her to get her miracle, to her, for her to get her healing. The first thing is that she overcome, uh, overcame the opposition. See, believer, in order for us to break through, to get our miracle, we're going to have to persevere. Perseverance, I know that's a word we've heard. In case you don't know the definition, I want to share that. Perseverance, it says, uh, the definition is to continue in a course of action even in the face of difficulty or with little or no prospect of success. 
continuance in a course of action, perseverance. You need a miracle in your life this morning. You have needs. You have things that you've been believing God for, prayers that are still yet to be answered. I, I tell you and I submit to you this morning that the answer is perseverance. You cannot give up this morning. You have to continue to believe that God is still a miracle worker, that Jesus is still the answer for your life and for my life. He's still the answer. Nothing's changed. He has the answer to your problem, to your issue, whatever that may be. However small you may seem it, you may think it is compared to others, you may feel that it's insignificant, but I'll tell you what, that nothing is in, insignificant to God, that God cares and is concerned about your issue, issue just as he was with this woman. She was just a woman in the crowd. Get the picture all the people around Jesus. What made her different? And she may have been going through this, right, internally. What made her different? There's all these people, everyone has needs. Why me, how is he gonna notice me? The second part of our text in Luke 8, 42, the second part of that scripture says, Jesus, uh, and Jesus went with him with his man and he was surrounded by the crowds. See, this woman didn't have a front row seat she didn't have an appointment with Jesus. In the physical, he wasn't expecting her. I'm sure he knew what was gonna transpire because he is God all powerful, but she didn't have a front row seat. She wasn't even a disciple of Jesus. She wasn't even in front of him to get his attention. She was just a woman in the crowd. And perhaps this morning in, in your situation, in your struggle, in your trial, whatever that may be, you may feel that you're just another person in the crowd, that you're just another person in the congregation, that you're just someone else, one of the other millions of people that has a need, that, that, that God doesn't take notice of you. But I'll tell you what, the Bible throughout from cover to cover lets us understand that he cares for you, that he calls you the apple of his eye. He said not even a bird will fall out of the sky without him knowing about, about it. How much, more, uh, how much worth more are, are you to him? He understands. He sees it. She thought she was just a woman in the crowd. So we get the picture here. Jesus. I mean, imagine he's here. He's, he's on his earthly ministry, and he's, walking, he's healing people. He's raising people from the dead. He's preaching the good news, and word is getting out, and, and, and people are just coming from all around to hear what he has to say. They have needs, and they're coming, and we see here how this started off. It wasn't, this, this passage didn't even start off about this woman in the crowd. It started off with this other gentleman named Jairus who had a daughter that was dying. So Jesus was, was even on, on his way to go help him, but on his way, something happened, something powerful there was this woman in the crowd. You know, I think back, and, and it's, it's funny that my, my mother's here because she remembers this story, but many years ago, and I'm gonna date myself by telling this story, but this is a true story. This was the time when, when Michael Jackson, the king of pop, got his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. This was way back in the 80s. So uh, my, my sister, Andrea, who was your mother, <laughs> she, was a, she was a Michael Jackson fan, so we all make our way there to Hollywood, right? To the walk, to, to the outside man's Chinese theater right there. And we're there, and people are beginning to come, right? And at first, it's normal, right? There's a lot of people, everyone's just kind of finding their, their place there. But as the time drew closer and closer to Michael Jackson making his way to, to, to get his star on the Walk of Fame, droves and droves of people begin to come and everyone wanted to see him people hundreds it seems like thousands of people were all squeezing in and they and they had they did their best to uh, prepare pedestrian walkways and they had guardrails and i myself i mean i was under 10 years old i was probably about 10 years old or less and i was there and i was just wondering what was going on and people over time begin to squeeze together and through the course of time, as much as, as my mom tried to keep us all together because of the, the strength of the crowds, we were separated. We got separated. No matter how strong you were, no matter how much intent and how purpose you, purposeful you were, there was no comparison to the strength of these crowds just going, moving this way, that way, people pushing, just trying to get a glimpse of Michael 
Jackson. And I remember the forest. I remember people, I mean, it was, it, was, it was a scary scene. I remember people being pushed against the guardrail, people fainting, falling out because they had nowhere to go. They, they tried with all their might to push back to give themselves some breathing room, but people were fainting. You know, the, the police were having to just pull people out. Crowds. And yes, I caught a glimpse of Michael Jackson, maybe for just one second. <laughs> As little as I was, and we survived it. I remember my, bro my older brother had to climb into a tree uh, for survival. I remember they took us all to, to where the kids were, and then, and then here came my mom to, to save us and to take us home. But I understand something about crowds. And I, and I just imagined, I mean, that, that, was, that was Michael Jackson. Here was Jesus. The answer, people needed healing, people had physical needs, and, and the crowds were there. And here was this woman in the crowd that, that had a need. It was near impossible for her, for her to have any face time with Jesus. See, that's how life can get sometimes. We get busy. There's distractions in life. There's different types of opposition. What, kind of, what do crowds look like in our lives? There's people, there's opinions, there's activities, there's responsibilities. All these things that are, trying to, to, that are part of the crowd and trying to keep us away from Jesus. There are duties, uh, there's work, there's school, there's recreation, there's different types of responsibilities. All these things in our lives, but when you have a need, you have to do what it takes to get close to Jesus. There's so much opposition, there's so much distraction. In the age of media that we live in, there's always something to watch. There's always something to listen to. There's always something to do. There's always a place to go. But if you have a need, you're going to have to get serious and reach out to Jesus. We have to push through. There's a passage, and for the sake of time, we're not going to read the entire passage, but uh, if you can mark it down, you could read it later. Luke 18, uh, verse 35 through 43. This was the story about the blind man who was... Uh, he needed a miracle. He was blind, and he heard that Jesus was coming on the scene. In uh, Luke 18, if we jump to verse 37, it said, They told him that Jesus the Nazarene was going by, so he begins shouting, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. In verse 39, they said, Be quiet. The people in front of him yelled at him, but he only shouted louder, Son of David, have mercy on me. When Jesus heard him, he stopped and ordered that the man be brought to him. Then Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? And see, this is the attitude, church, believer, that we're going to have to take if we're going to get our miracle. See, there are crowds, there are other types of opposition, but we're going to we're gonna have to yell out to him. We're going to have to strive with all that we have to, to touch the hem of his garment so that we can receive the miracle because God's just waiting. He understands the need that you have, but you're going to have to press through all the circumstances with your faith. Your answer's there. Your answer's there. Now, this woman had an issue in her life. Now, there's different types of issues that we face. Uh, we can look at the issues of the day, right, the temporary things that, that we go through, things that most of the time when, when you know, the day ends and you, you start your next day uh, after that, that sometimes these are the issues that go away. You know, maybe you had a hard day at work, but you understand that, you know, if I just get through today, tomorrow it's going to be all right. So there are those issues that we face. Those, those are tough, but those aren't the most tragic situations. Uh, there are the other circumstances and issues uh, of our lives that are based around events, circumstances, things that affect us for, for a bit longer. I mean, they come and go, but it's a matter of time. We can call these issues seasonal in our lives, and these are real issues, and, and God is concerned about these issues as well. He's concerned about your daily issues. He's concerned about the seasonal issues, and we have to continue to believe in him for, for those things. But this, this woman here was, it was with an issue of suffering. The Bible says it was 12 years that she was struggling with this circumstance, with this issue. It was a long-term trial that she was going through, and she was in a place of desperation. See, you may feel that you're in a place of trial and circumstance that's hard, and you feel like it's never going to end. Perhaps you've spent all that you had to try to find an answer to this situation. There was a sense of desperation in her life. She had nowhere else to turn. There's a similar story in 2 Kings 5. Uh, the whole passage is verse 1 uh, through 14. This was about Naaman, who was a mighty warrior. 
He was a mighty warrior, but the Bible says that he had leprosy, and leprosy in this day and age was, was something that was just repulsed by society. They, they, it caused you to be separated from society. And someone told him that there was a prophet that, that, that God can help him and heal him, so through this, the course of this story, he, he hears about uh, the prophet Elisha. And this was a noble man. This was a mighty warrior. So I'm sure in his mind, he probably thought that, you know, I have leprosy, but the man of God's going to come because of my status, because of my place in the army, that he's going to come to me and maybe he's going to lay his hands on me and I'm going to be healed. But what's interesting about this story is it wasn't even Elisha the prophet that went. Elisha sent his servant to go. I think Naaman probably, was, he, he was humbled in this situation because he thought that he deserved you know some better treatment but here was a prophet just sending his 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 messenger to go give this man a message and what was the message the message wasn't hey Naaman uh, you're healed just like that snapped his fingers and, and you're healed no what happened in this story the messenger told Naaman this this mighty warrior go into the Jordan and dip yourself seven times and then you'll be healed and at first, Naaman was, was, was upset, first of all, because Elisha himself didn't come. And isn't that sometimes how we get with our miracles, right? We have our, our, our picture and how we think that our miracles should transpire. That God, you'll just pass me, I'll be healed, and I'm done with this situation. But Elisha sent his messenger and told Naaman, go dip yourself in the Jordan seven times. So one, Naaman was humbled because, one, he didn't even get any face time with, with the prophet. Secondly, in the passage here, you'll read that the Jordan River was, was thought to be a, a dirty river. It wasn't the, the place that you'd want to go and wash once, twice, but seven times. So Naaman was taken back, and he was like, who is this man to tell me this? But Naaman's people told him, sir, you want your miracle? Do what he says. The Bible says that he goes in obedience. He had to press through his preconceived ideas of what a miracle looks like. He had to press through his pride. He had to press through his own framework of thinking of how, of how God should, should deal with his miracle and how God should answer his prayer. He had to be obedient, and he went and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan River. And the Bible says that when he came out, see, leprosy was, was an issue of the skin. People's appendages would fall off. It was just a horrible disease. But as he came out of the Jordan River that seventh, seventh time, his skin was as fair as a baby. He received his miracle. Why? Because he pressed through. Because he pressed through. And I don't know what you're going through this morning, but perhaps you feel that your miracle should just happen in, 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 in a moment of time, and, and with God all things are possible, that can happen. But perhaps God is taking you on a journey for your miracle. Perhaps there's an area of forgiveness that God's working out and he's promised you a reconciliation with your family. Sometimes there's a process of humility and humbling and, and there's a process of time. Maybe it's physical healing you're believing God for. God, as we see in the word of God, he can snap his fingers, he can do it in a moment. But sometimes, believer, it's a journey. So your healing is, is transpiring, your healing is coming, the answer to your prayer is happening, and again, it might happen in the twinkling of an eye in a single moment, but it may be involved with a process. Don't be discouraged. God is moving nevertheless on your behalf. Amen. He's moving. See, our woman in the crowd, she was desperate. She had to connect, she had to touch Jesus. So in Luke, in our text, in Luke 8, 46, but Jesus said, someone deliberately touched me for I felt healing power go out for me. See, if we're gonna get our miracle, we're gonna have to plug, plug in. You know, it doesn't matter if you have a lamp, how close you put that plug to the, to the socket, to the outlet right there, it's never gonna receive the power unless it gets plugged in, isn't that true? You could have it sitting there for ages, for years, but unless that plug is plugged into that outlet, it's not going to receive the power. And it's the same way with faith, believer. Unless we get plugged in, unless we get connected with Christ, with Jesus Christ, we're not going to receive our miracle. Why? Because we have to plug into his power. It's not positive thinking. It's not, it's not well wishes. It's prayer. It's faith and it's power. And that is where we're going to receive our miracle. Faith. Faith is a medium, believer. 
Faith in God is a way that you, you and I are going to get our answer. It was by faith that this woman was able to receive her healing. Now, what did faith cause her to do in our text? It caused her to take action. She could have felt sorry for herself. She could have just, just stood by and thought like, well, maybe if I'm in the proximity of Jesus, I'll receive my healing. No, but faith caused her to take action. See, sometimes we can sit around and we could just wait and wait when the, the answer is before us for us to take that step of faith. We have to take that step. I don't know where you believe in God for church, but I know you have needs because I have needs this morning. It's time to get up and it's time to take that step of faith. It's time to take that step of faith. And you know what that means for your life. I believe God's speaking this morning. Sometimes we sit around and we're in a constant place of inactivity in our faith. But God is saying it's time to take that step. Take that step. If this woman never took that step, she wouldn't have received her miracle. So we need to believe. The Bible says in Hebrews eleven six, 6, and it is, it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. It's going to take faith. It's going to take faith, believer. It's going to take faith. You're going to have to believe. You've been believing God for a miracle. You've been believing God for the salvation of your children, of your loved ones. You've been believing God for breakthrough in your family. You've been believing God for healing. You have to believe. You have to have faith. Leave no place for doubt. Leave no place for doubt in your heart, but have faith. It is impossible to please God without faith. Faith is a key to open the door. The Bible says in James 2.17, even so faith, if it has not works, is dead, being alone. Take that step of faith. In your situation, take that step of faith. Take that step of faith. It's time to take that step of faith. Mark eleven twenty two. 22, the Bible says, and Jesus said to, to the disciples, have faith in God. Have faith in God. I tell you the truth. You could say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. I tell you, you can pray for anything and if you believe that you received it, it will be yours. That's good news this morning, isn't it, church? I'll read it one more time. I tell you, you can pray for anything, and if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. If you believe that you received it, it will be yours. Healing, if you believe that you received it, it will be yours. God's provision in your life, providing for needs, if you believe it, it will be yours. You gotta believe, church. There's no room for doubt. We have to believe. We have to take that step. And don't get me wrong, there's a time of waiting. There's a purpose and a time for waiting. But we have to wait in faith. We have to wait with purpose. We have to be deliberate. God hasn't forgotten about you. God hasn't forgotten about your situation. We have to believe. The Bible says also in James 4, 8, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. You have to draw close to him. This woman, she purposed in her heart, if I could just touch the hem, of, the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. If I could just, just touch, just, just touch the hem of his garment, I may not need an appointment, I may not have to have a two hour conversation with him, I may not have to explain to him uh, all the ins and outs of my problem in my situation, if I could just, just touch, just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. There's power in the name of Jesus, church. There's power in the blood of Jesus. All you need to do is just, just reach out to him, just, just touch him, overcome the obstacles, overcome the trials, overcome the things that are keeping you from him. Press through. Press through. Maybe it's time to cut some things off in our lives that, that are distracting us. Maybe we spend more time uh, looking at, at our phone instead of reading God's word and the promises that he has for us. Maybe, maybe we're more concerned about what other people think than, than with what he thinks. 
It's time to cut some things off. If, we're, if we want a serious miracle, we're going to have to get serious about our miracle, understand what it means to sacrifice, and put ourselves second so that God can perform a miracle. This woman, she was done playing games. She didn't care what people thought. Perhaps you want a miracle of deliverance. She didn't care what people thought. She, she was going to press through. She was going to press through no matter what. Cro small crowds, big crowds, no matter what. She set forth in her heart that I have to just touch the hem of his garment. And therein lies my miracle. And it's the same for you and I, church. If we reach out and touch him, if we, just, if we strive and we break through every barrier, we could receive that miracle. I want the worship team to, to please make their way up. As we prepare to close and, and wind this down, I was reading something, uh, talking about this woman and her, her issue and all that she had to overcome to receive her miracle. You know, regarding space and, and, and rockets and space travel, there's something called uh, escape velocity. And I have a picture up there I want to put up there just for a graphic. Escape velocity. Now, that is the amount of velocity an object needs to escape Earth's orbit, right? Rockets go up. But there's a certain speed that this object has to achieve in order to break through Earth's orbit. Now, you may ask, how fast is that? Escape velocity is the speed at which an object must travel to break free of a planet or moon's gravitational force and enter orbit. A space, listen to this, a spacecraft leaving the surface of the Earth needs to be going seven miles a second or 25,000 miles per hour to enter orbit. See, this rocket has to achieve a certain speed, a certain force, a certain velocity to enter orbit. While aircraft in this world, they fly here to there, right? They, 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 they cause us to be able to travel far distances, and we take airplanes and stuff, but nothing that we've traveled has gone 25,000 miles an hour. Why? Because it's just for the purpose of recreation. It's for the purpose of getting from here to there. But when you want to get into the realm of send, sending something from this earth into outer space, there's this velocity that you have to achieve. And I'm thinking of, of this woman this woman in the crowd who had a dire miracle that she needed. And talking about an issue of blood, I, I'd go on to say that she probably had, she, hadn't she got her miracle, she probably would, may have not been around much longer. Or if she was in just a place of, of, of utter sickness. But see, she had to break through. Just with a rocket, there's, there's the opposition of gravity. All the force trying to just keep it down on earth, to keep it in the, in the normal realm, to keep it here in the, in, the, in, the, in the earthly realm, in the physical realm. But in order for this rocket to, to break through the atmosphere and to get to outer space to its destination, it's going to have to achieve and reach this velocity. And there's a lot of power that has to be pushed behind that. That's why these engines and these rockets are so large. Why, that's why they, 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 they just take so much fuel because there's such amount of force that has to cause it to push through for it to break that barrier. And I don't know what you've gone through this morning or where, where you're at in your life, but I know we have needs. And perhaps you've been just in a place of, of, of standstill and you're, you're still waiting for your miracle. I'll tell you that you're going to have to step out on faith. We're going to have to get serious about it. Jesus is going to have to be the, the focus of your life. And this, this is gospel. I mean, this is something that we all have to be reminded of because, again, we get busy, right? And we're busy in so many things in life, but sometimes we have to just refocus our gaze on him, the true answer, the source of our miracle, the one who could change all things, the one who has the power to just say, let there be light, and there was light, and he spoke the world into existence. He's the answer to your problem, to your trial, to your struggle.
And as this woman had to overcome and had to press through the crowds, there are crowds that we have in our lives that things that will try to prevent us from getting our answer. See, we're going to have to push through the crowds and the opposition. And as we close here, this woman pressed through. And in Luke 8, 44, it says, coming up behind Jesus, she touched the fringe of his robe and immediately, immediately the bleeding stopped. And that's the attitude that we have to have, church. Jesus, if I could just, just touch the hem of your garment. Lord, if I just have the faith, the size of a mustard seed, I can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will, it will be done. See, when you talk about the power of God, there's no limit. Mustard seed-sized faith can move mountains. Can move mountains. You're in this place and you need healing, you need breakthrough. Well, I believe this morning you're going to have a, a chance to come before the Lord, to make an altar call. And don't let it be like any other altar call. Purpose in your heart that, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave this thing here. Whatever it is, God, I'm leaving it here, and I, and, and I receive my miracle in Jesus' name. And you're going to receive it. Why? Because you have faith this morning, the same as the woman in the crowd. Thank you, Jesus. Let's bow our heads as we prepare to pray this morning.